The text in this page has been given some basic styling by using page properties and then exporting the CSS to an external style sheet. To give the page more structure, you need to group elements together and give each group an identity so that it can be styled independently. So I'm going to show you how to insert div elements and give them unique IDs. We don't need the CSS styles panel open at the moment, so I'm going to collapse it and then go back to the underlying HTML by clicking source code in the related files toolbar. A div is simply a generic grouping element. It has no meaning or default styles of its own. HTML5 introduces new sectioning elements such as header, footer and article that are similar to divs, but they're not supported by older browsers, so I don't plan to use them. However, to make a future transition to HTML5 sectioning elements easier, in most cases I'll use IDs that map to the equivalent HTML5 element. And to make things clearer, I've created a diagram to show the structure I plan to apply to this page. At the top of the page, there'll be a header div with the main heading and a background image. Beneath the header, the unordered list will be converted into a navigation menu. The main content of the page goes in a div on the left, covering roughly two-thirds of the width. The most appropriate HTML5 element would be an article, so I'll use that div's ID. On the first page of the website, the remaining space on the right will be used for a photo gallery. At the bottom of the page, I'll add a footer for copyright information. All of these elements will be wrapped in an outer div called content. On other pages of the site, the gallery will be replaced by a div with the ID aside. I'm using a different ID so that I can apply different styles. Each page will have groups of HTML elements identified by these six IDs, which can be used to control the way they're styled. It's important to note that you can use an ID only once on each page. If I wanted to use multiple articles or nav elements, I would need to use CSS classes instead. A different way of looking at this structure is as an HTML tree diagram. HTML and CSS borrow the metaphor of a family tree. HTML elements that are nested inside another element are regarded as being children or descendants of the outer element. At the top of the family tree is the HTML tag. The body element is a direct child of the HTML tag, and the content div is a child of the body. The five other divs are all children of the content div. As in human families, children inherit characteristics from their parents, so styles applied to the HTML tag, body element or content div, will normally be inherited by the header, nav, article, gallery or aside, and footer. But children can also acquire unique characteristics of their own. So you can apply styles to the header div that not only override inherited styles, but are also not shared with any other part of the page. Right, let's insert the div tags and assign IDs to different parts of the page. I'm going to start by wrapping the main heading in a div. So I'll put my insertion point anywhere inside this main heading, and then select H1 in the tag selector at the bottom of the document window. One way to insert a div tag is to go to the Insert menu, select Layout Objects and Div Tag. This opens the Insert Div Tag dialog box, and the first option, Insert, says Wrap Around Selection, which is exactly what we want, and then I want to give it an ID of Header. This new CSS rule button here lets you create a style rule immediately, but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to click OK to insert the div tag. In design view, the div is surrounded by a dotted line, and if you pass your mouse pointer over it, it turns into a solid red line. And in the underlying HTML, we've got a div tag wrapped around the H1, and the ID is header. The next element that I want to give an ID to is this unordered list. So put the insertion point anywhere inside the unordered list and select UL in the tag selector. And I don't actually need to put a div around this, so I'm just going to put the ID in here, which will be NAV, nav, and press enter to make the change. 
and you see that we've now got the ID nav inside the opening UL tag. Now I want to wrap all the rest of the content in a div, so I'm going to select that in design view, and this time we'll use a different way of inserting a div tag. I'll open the insert panel and switch to the common category, and there we have insert div tag. So I'll just click that and we get exactly the same dialog box. Again, it's wrap around selection, which is exactly what I want, and the ID that I'm going to give it is article. Again, I'm not going to create a style rule, so just click OK. And all the content is now surrounded by that div, and you can see that it's div ID equals article in the underlying HTML. Now let's put in a div for the gallery. Now, believe it or not, there's yet another way to insert a div tag. It's on the layout category of the insert bar. And there we have insert div tag. So I'm going to click that. This time, I don't want it to wrap around the selection, so I'm going to open this little menu. And what I want to do is to put it after tag, and then it gives me a list of the tags that have got IDs within the page. What I want to do is to put it after the article, and then this is going to be gallery for the ID. Click OK, and if I just scroll down here, you can see that Dreamweaver has inserted a div after my article div. This one's called gallery, and it's got a little bit of placeholder content in here. Now a div for the footer, so we'll do insert div tag again. We don't want it wrapped around the selection, we want it after the tag. This time we want it to be after the gallery. I'm going to use the ID footer, and this time we'll create a new CSS rule. So I'll click that, and it gives me the new CSS rule dialog box. Select the type ID, that's fine, there's the correct ID there. And I don't want it to be in this document only. I want to make sure that it's in main CSS. So make sure that you open that and select main CSS, click OK. And what I want to do is to set the font size for my footer to 75, not pixels, but percent. And then click OK. That returns us to the insert div tag dialog box. Click OK to close that. And we've got some content there for the footer. And you can see that the placeholder text is already smaller than the text in the rest of the body. The final div that I want to insert I want to wrap around absolutely everything, so I select body in the tag selector at the bottom of the document window, and then insert div tag. We do want to wrap it around the selection, and the ID will be content. Just click OK. The insert div tag dialog box can wrap a div around the current selection, or you can specify where you want to insert the div in relation to any other element that has an ID and you can also create styles for the div at the same time. Now that I've created logical groups for the page content and assigned each one an ID, the page is ready for styling.